Sugar and cancer. The questions are swirling. Does sugar cause cancer? Does sugar feed cancer cells? Does sugar increase cancer recurrence risk? Is it possible to starve a cancer cell? The answer to every one of those questions is absolutely no. Though that answer is accurate, it may surprise many of you as social media and the dime store gurus will profess otherwise with their fancy terms and scare tactics. In the comments, drop a yes if you were surprised by this answer and a no if you were not surprised by the answer. It will be interesting to see how the percentages play out. In this episode 19 of the Recovery Room Podcast, I bring you an expert cancer dietitian, not only to debunk these myths, but to explain why they are not true. If we are meeting for the first time, I'm oncology physical therapist, Dr. Leslie Waltke. If you are joining me in the recovery room, it is most likely because you are living with or beyond cancer. If so, I hate that cancer has brought us together, but I am glad you are here. Welcome to the Recovery Room Podcast, where we bring you accurate, digestible, and relevant information and evidence-based answers so that you can live your best life after cancer. This is a short but info-packed episode, so please hang out until the end for a full recap of information. Thanks again for being here. Enjoy the show. Today we are talking about sugar and cancer. I'm a huge topic, lots of misinformation, so I'm excited to introduce you to registered dietitian and oncology specialist, Mandy Minden. Mandy, welcome. Hi, Leslie. Thank you. I'm super pumped up about this topic today. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So I'm just going to blast you with the first question. Does sugar feed cancer? Sugar does not directly cause cancer. Okay, so, so no, feeding sugar does not cause your cancer. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to feed no, you. No, it right. does not feed cancer cells. And so, I, you know, and, and glucose, which is, is titled and def defined as sugar, mm -hmm. is found in most carbohydrate foods. So your yeah. grains and your fruits and your vegetables and even in your dairy products. Yep. So all these really good foods that we're supposed to be eating for our health right. do contain the glucose factor. And, yeah. and that's, you know, that's the main source of energy for our cells in every our body. Cell. Exactly. Every cell. Because I'll say every cell in your body needs glucose and sugar to function and anything we eat, tell me if this is accurate dietitian, but anything we eat, whether it's fat, protein, or sugar, carbohydrate, whatever it is, eventually in its lo lowest form gets broken down into glucose to feed cells. You got it. So yeah. cells cannot tell if the right. glucose came from a jelly bean or <laughs> like an apple. <laughs> so it just can't decipher between the two. Everything yeah. does get broken down into glucose and utilized for fuel. Like you mentioned, for all those different, for your brain, for the immune system, for yeah. your blood system, for the muscle cells, everything needs to function efficiently and you need to feed those systems with glucose. Right. Okay. So People say, I don't eat any sugar at all. I'm like, well, yeah, you do, because everything literally is sugar. <laughs> so what we do know, though, is let's talk about this data, that being overweight or being obese, we know is linked to, I think, at least 11 to 13 different kinds of cancers. Okay. Yeah. And that being overweight or obese does increase the risk of somebody who has breast cancer, colon cancer, or prostate cancer, it does increase the risk of recurrence. Okay. But it's not necessarily what they're eating that's causing it. It's literally the obesity is increasing the risk somehow. And we know obviously that high sugar foods and high calorie foods do impact weight gain. So talk to us about that, the difference between those two things. Absolutely. So it's the added sugar piece to that, that can result in lots of extra empty calories, Yeah. which that contributes to the weight gain you just mentioned over time. So, you know, the, the added sugars, not your natural sugars, so the packaged goods, mm -hmm. baked goods, candy, so that can add up over time. And increased body fat, as you mentioned, it's going to cause potential for being overweight or being classified as in the obese category, which, yes, that increases that risk factor for the types of cancers along with diabetes, the cardiac conditions. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think, too, what I see that kind of makes me a little sad is that our general population tends to consume a lot of the added sugar items. So right. just becoming more aware of the amount of sugar that's in your diet currently, just to take that healthy step forward. Mm -hmm. The diets that have those 
a lot of added sugars to them, they tend to be really low in vitamins and minerals also, which right. are essential for the body. So low compounds, those compounds are needed, the vitamins and minerals to help protect us against the recurrence coming into play. So mm -hmm. again, you know, stepping back and away from those added sugars and focusing on the more natural sugars, the fruits and the vegetables. Right. Yeah. Because you say, I don't eat sugar. It's like, well, you don't eat fruits and vegetables then because they all have sugar in them. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, um, I'll say healthier choices between, you know, sugar is sugar is found across the board. It's, it's really making that switch to understanding what type of sugar we're choosing to eat and put right. in our bodies. Right. So if I'm a cancer survivor and I have an ice cream once a week, it's not going to kill me. No, <laughs> it's not going to kill you. It's, it's not going to make you at any more higher risk by any means, either eliminating all of the sugar, I'll say in right. your diet won't starve any kind of cancer yes, cells. You. Yep. So, you know, that it, that's not the route to go by any means. It right. just might, the extra, you know, if you had ice cream every day, then, okay, so then the extra calories just might result in that weight gain, as mentioned. Yeah. But yeah. having it from time to time in moderation, please enjoy your treats in yeah. small amounts. It's, yeah. it's we, we, we tend to be worried about those sort of things, and fear doesn't need to be added to right. every now and then. Right. So it's not necessarily what you eat, it's just how much of the bad stuff that you might eat that does two things. Number one, it, it, it impacts weight gain. And it also might impact if you're eating a lot of bad foods, you may not be eat, you're not be hungry enough to eat some good stuff. That and then yeah, and don't forget the it's low in the vitamins and minerals and other right. essential nutrients yeah. too. So you might be lacking in some of those micronutrients because those added sugar items often don't have them. Okay. Okay. All right. And again, you're, there's no way to starve a cancer cell. We can we humans cannot control nor can your physician nor can medication nor can visualization. We can't send specific nutrients to certain cells in our body. And that's the, the nasty thing about cancer cells is they will take what they want, which is why they're so dangerous. So, Absolutely. Um, it, there's no starving it, unfortunately. Right. It would be nice if we could, you know, pinpoint certain cells and just starve them away with right. the lack of the lack of sugar. But a, a diet like this, if you were to try, I'll say in quotes, to right. avoid eating sugar, that, that would eliminate a lot of different foods, it would be very restrictive and it would deprive your body instead of helping your body. Right. Okay. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you so much for helping clear up those sugar misconceptions because they're so powerful and, and being a cancer survivor is already hard enough. And then when you get bombarded by this, these inaccuracies and the pressures from family and friends to do this, don't do that. And you're going to die. And you want to, it's just, absolutely. You, you There's so much, and we all have loving support systems, but I think, you know, bottom line comes down to remembering that occasional added sugars in your diet will not cause cancer to recur or make cancer cells progress. Fabulous. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate your expertise and uh, have, a, have a great day, everyone. We'll talk soon. Bye. Thanks, Leslie. Anytime. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Before the recap, if you haven't already, please hit the follow and subscribe buttons to make sure that you get streamlined access to The Recovery Room and to The Recovery Room podcast's invaluable cancer recovery information. All of the foods we eat, including the healthy ones like dairy, carbohydrates, grains, fruits, and vegetables, all contain sugars, aka glucose. All foods, regardless of what they were made of, will be broken down into sugar or glucose by our digestive systems. Every cell in the human body, whether it is in your brain, your pinky toe, your kidney, or your vertebrae, needs sugars to live and function. Our cells are pretty smart, but they cannot tell, nor do they care, where the glucose they are using came from, whether it's from an avocado or my all-time personal favorite, a chocolate chip cookie. Also, our bodies cannot choose which nutrients to send or not send to our cells, meaning our bodies cannot or do not have the ability to specifically starve cancer cells. So therefore, a restrictive diet would not help your body, it would deprive your body. Evidence does link being overweight or obese to an increased risk of getting some kinds of cancer and is linked to increased cancer recurrence risk in breast cancers, prostate cancers, and colorectal cancers. Though the connection between this increased body weight and an increase of cancer or cancer recurrence is well documented, the reason or reasons behind this connection are not yet fully understood. 
Foods with added sugars like packaged goods, baked goods, and candies have lots of calories and minimal nutrients like vitamins and minerals. So over time, this is a negative double whammy for our waistline and health, increasing potentially the risk for cancer as well as diabetes and heart disease. However, fear does not need to be added to your diet. There are no reputable studies or any scientific rationale for that matter that suggests sugar feeds cancer cells. And please don't demonize any occasional food or food choice. Eating an occasional cookie or piece of yummy dessert will not increase risk, yet we do need to minimize and make small steps in awareness of how much we're putting in our bodies over time. Small steps are steps. Talk with your medical oncologist, talk with your primary care physician, and if you haven't yet, talk with a registered dietitian. You get one life and one body, so treat them both well. And treat yourself like you're the most important person on this planet, because you are. Let's talk again soon.